money really does matter. But if you run your own business, then it's not just money on the line. When you invest in marketing, yes, money's important, but it's not just your money. It's your marriage, your mortgage, your mental health you're putting on the line when you run your own business. And I want you to take control of your business growth. I want you to take control of the things that assure you that the money, marriage, mortgage, and mental health that you invest in your business will pay you back. So if we think about the way that real people really buy things, if you were to draw yourself a line and on the left-hand side put there <coughs> things, that, things that you buy in a heartbeat, you know, the handbag that wouldn't let you leave the shop without being bought, or something deeply, uh, deeply functional, like you're running through the train station, you fancy a coffee, you grab a coffee. It's an impulse purchase, because really, your money, your decision, get it wrong, only you care. Up at the other end, there's a, there's a considered purchase, there's a high-risk purchase. And there are a few things that come together that would determine where what your business sells might be placed on this line, not by you, but by the people who buy from you. So first of all, there's money. Is it an amount of money that you could afford to lose? Then it might be a purchase that you make in a heartbeat. If it's an amount of money that you cannot afford to lose, or the financial arrangement is an ongoing or a committed one, then there's more complexity in this purchase. The other is the people affected by the decision you make. Not always involved in the decision, but often, but affected by the decision you make. So down at the left-hand side, you might put you know, a, a, a gift to yourself. In the middle, you might put, I don't know, choosing a car seat for your child. You'll give that some thought. On the right, 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 you might put choosing your new home. Because you're making a decision on behalf of other people in a family group, it's complicated. In a business-to-business -business context, what might this be? Envelopes, pens, something like that. Maybe choosing a new member of your team in the middle there somewhere. And perhaps a multi-million pound piece of software up at the right-hand side. And then there's the really interesting bit. And it's whether it's an emotionally driven sale or a functionally driven sale. Down at the left-hand side, if it's I, one of those I just had to have at moments, then you know, it's purely emotionally driven. And you'll go see it, buy it. Equally true if it is serving purely a functional need. When there are both needs to fulfill, which is why I talk about something perhaps like a child seat for your, car, uh, uh, you know, for your child, there's emotion bound up in that. So as soon as there is both an emotional and a functional requirement to your sale, the more people slow themselves down and put the brakes on. So in any decision that is financially complex, affects a number of people, and if you have a moment of emotional <gasps> and also some functional requirements to fulfill, then it's a considered purchase. And I'm sure you can all put yourselves in situations uh, anywhere on that line with things that you buy. And why does it matter? It matters because the more considered a purchase is, the more chances there are for you as a business to lose someone in that process because there are stepping stones. There are moments of pause. Someone will see something, like it, suss it out, try it, ask some friends. They deliberately slow themselves down, and there are different stages of their decision. And every stage, every moment of pause, is a moment where you either keep them or lose them. And if you don't have a stepping stone for them to rest and think for a moment and choose to step forward, then they're going to step to the path that your competitor has very kindly put alongside. So one of the key things about a watertight marketing process is that you have a stepping stone for every moment of 
pause and reflection in a sales process. And what most people do when they think about this stepped journey is they think about a sales funnel. You know, you will have seen diagrams of sales funnels. And I would imagine that mapped onto those diagrams, you've probably seen something like audience, respondents, leads, um, proposals, sales, something like that, kind of internally driven labels that you've applied to somebody. So the first thing that I ask people to do is to take their funnel and change the labels. Change the labels to what's going on in the person's mind. So what people normally label it with is an effect, it's an outcome. They are a lead or a respondent because they have done something. If you map on what they were thinking that caused them to potentially have that outcome, you are more likely to be able to manage and have some effect over the cause and effect. Now, I love a sales funnel. It's a great diagram, it's really helpful. The reason sales funnels diagrams exist is because as you go down through this process, there are fewer people at each stage. Unfortunately, the use of the term and this really powerful visual actually makes people think that it works like a sales funnel. It's just not true. In fact, most sales processes would probably be better represented with a colander if you had to choose yourself a kitchen implement. So in the watertight marketing, I go on to change this to a picture of buckets, funnels, and taps, but I'm not going to take you through that today. You can go and, you can go and understand why people call me the bucket lady another time. So I'm going to take you through the 13 touchpoint leaks. And the 13 touchpoint leaks have been brought together across the 200 or more businesses that I've worked with to bring together all the typical ways that people lose money in their marketing process, lose customers, lose the profits that go with them, lose their good opinion, and ultimately waste their marketing investment. So the first leak, and you may notice that I'm gonna start at the bottom of the process. Step one, talk to the customers you already have. Don't go out and find new ones. So leak number one is forgotten customers. This is when you've done a deal with someone and you've taken their money and then you never speak to them again. Because the companies that do this really well, companies that stay in touch with people, are the kind of people who you want to see the emails from. They stay in touch with you in ways that are useful, relevant. You are welcome the materials that they send you. And they almost anticipate the service needs that you happen to have. Leak number two is moving on up a little. So this is called poor onboarding. And it's that moment in time between when you've handed over your money and when you're actually a customer. So yes, I've given you my cash, but when would I know whether you've delivered on your promise? It's not the moment I happen to land on your customer database. Just because you've tagged me a customer doesn't mean I think I'm one. There's normally a period of time, maybe it's two weeks, maybe it's six weeks, when someone actually uses your stuff for the first time, sees whether it does the job, and that's onboarding. It's your welcome window. Structured communications across your welcome window to take someone from giving you money to loving and using what you do. Leak number three is no emotional connection. This is just before they hand over their money, and there's that little moment where they go, are you sure? Do you really want to work with these guys? Or they put it in front of somebody else, and they go, oh, no, I wouldn't trust them. I've never heard of them. If there's an emotional connection with a business, then you'll overcome that little, oh, do we need to spend this amount of money? And one of the best ways to really get this emotional connection is to be consistent, is to look and feel and sound professional, and to really keep that conversation going, as well as showing some personality. 